Eddie Moss was leaving and coach was like, you know, you could step right in and, you know, I can learn behind Eddie and Eddie Moss was one of the best point guards to come out of it was the one of the best point guards in, in America defensively yeah. and running a basketball team. He wasn't a great scorer, but he can run a team and he can play defense. And that's something that I needed to learn how to do because all I wanted to do was score. Right. So coaches like you can learn behind him. And then as a sophomore, you, you know, you become a, became a starter. But I think that what sealed the deal is, you know, Coach Beheim came down to the projects, came to, the, came to my, part, uh, my mom's apartment. And we sat there and, you know, you, you say things that, you know, he says things that, you know, you want to hear. And uh, the funny story, D, when he was leaving, a lot of people didn't know who he was. So yeah. some, you know, some of the old, some of the guys who were doing the crazy things, they were coming to us like, yo, is, he's a detective? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I said, so that's Coach Bayhawk. What are you talking about? They was like, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, Al, it was so funny. They was like, yeah, yeah. They was like, you talking to the detectives? I was like, yeah, that's Coach <laughs> Bayhawk. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh. And you know what? When he came to visit, he walked through the project like like it was nothing. He, you know, he, you know it's a predominantly black neighborhood, yeah. you know. So he came in and it was a you know good interview and you know everything went well. And I just decided that you know Syracuse had to be the place. And plus, it was close to home. The carry is going to be the it was going to be the first year the carrier dome. Ooh, you know. So and 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 the Big East, you know. And you you when you think about in the first. In the '80s, the Big East was is, was out of control. It was I mean, it was just amazing to play in. So that was another reason why I just I decided to go to Syracuse. So let's we'll talk about that Big East, though, because like you said, that's that's like the '80s is like Georgetown. You was just like going into it. You came to Syracuse 1980, right? 1980. Yeah. And then you had Georgetown, Villanova. Uh, who who else in the um, Pitt? Pitt. Boston College. Boston College was really good back then. Yeah, so I, they were probably I, one I, of the better fresh, teams, right? Pardon? Boston College was probably one of the better teams that. Yes, in, in, yes. So I'm yeah. playing my freshman year. I'm going against these. Might, you might not even remember these. I'm going up against John Bagley, Sleepy Floyd, Stuart Grant. Like I'm going up against these guys as a freshman. So yeah. I'm coming in as a freshman. I'm an All American out of high school. I'm coming as a freshman and I'm going up against these guys and I'm going, I got this. Man, these guys put me in check real quick. <laughs> I was like, the coach is like, yeah, I'll tell you, you got some work to do. But it was a learning process for me as a freshman, though. You know, um, I think I averaged about maybe 12 to 15 minutes a game, you know, but it was a, it, it was it was it was a, a learning process for sure, especially coming out of high school because I was an All-American, All-City from New York City, one of the top guards to come out. And then you go into college. I went into college thinking I was that dude, but I figured out really quickly that uh, it, it took some time to learn. So now, like, usually, like, back then, I know especially if, if you're one of the top guys coming out of New York City, you're most likely one of the top guys in America. That's just how it was, because back then, New York City, and even now, but New York City was, like, that was a hotbed for for – I mean, basketball players everywhere. So how was that for you, like you said, being an All-American, and then you come to Cuse kind of having to scale back, you know, 12 to 15 minutes. But you still – and we know our Coach Bam is – if you play as a freshman, I mean, that's You're big lucky. Time. Yeah, 12 to 15 <laughs> minutes is – is that's a good amount as a freshman. But how was that for you, having to scale that time back? How, how was that transition from See, going to me, playing a lot to not so much? I, I think it was something that I had to accept because I – knew that I had to learn the system and learn that collegiate basketball was a lot faster, a lot more physical than high school basketball. Um, you had to learn a little bit about time and score, who to pass it to, who you give the ball to. Because in high school, it's like, look, if I don't want to, you know, I'm the scorer and I pass to who I want to pass to. Whereas when I came in, you know, there were certain people that coaches like this, these are the people that have to get the ball. You know, and then you learn that there's a system, you know, they had the press, they had the zone, that we played a little bit man to man and all these different plays. So it was a learning, it was a learning process for me as a freshman. But, you know, Eddie Moss was just great, you know, bless his soul that, he, you know, he's passed away. But Eddie Moss was somebody who taught me a whole lot about, you know, what it was going to take, you know, to be able to play at Syracuse. And, you know, and I was grateful for that. 
I mean, because Coach Coach Beheim wasn't, a, you know, people people don't realize Coach Beheim was no joke in the eighties. I mean, you 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 turn the ball over once, you, you don't even look at the bench because you go that's where you're going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was he he was just you know he was no nonsense. But you know, people didn't understand that it wasn't because he was being you know hard. He just his expectations of you was just so high. You know, and and you had to appreciate that. And that, that guy, you kind of answered my next question. I was going to say, who really kind of helps you, you know, your first year get through those ups and downs? You, you, you kind of talked about it with Eddie. Yeah, what, it had what specifically to be, did he really do, though, to kind of, you know, get you through it? Well, I did, a lot of it, be, I, I, was, I was his roommate on the road. We roommate on the road. And he used to just talk to me about, the transition from high school to college, you know, how you have to sleep right. You have to make sure you get sleep. You have to make sure you eat right. You got to go to class. All those things go hand in hand. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, and you have to get to practice on time. Get there early. Don't leave early. You know, stay <laughs> after, you know. You know, it was just, it, it was just like, he was, the one thing that he taught me is that you have to get into a, a, a format and stick to, and try to stick to that format. You know, you're not going to just come to Syracuse and play basketball. It's just not going to work. You, there's certain things that you have to do to be successful in playing at Syracuse. And he's like, if you're not going to be able to do that, you won't be playing because Coach Beheim does not mess around. That's a, that's a hundred percent. And, you know, Co Coach Fine was no joke either. Coach Fine, he was like, <laughs> Coach Fine was big on education. Cause I don't know how many times <laughs> I don't know how many times I had to run the stairs. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, you know what? Cause it didn't change from when you were there to when I got there, because I remember missing class in summer school. And now he makes me go sit in his office, just open a book, not even reading the book, just open the book and sit there and look at it for three hours to make me know that you <laughs> look like you're doing something in there. Burn was a stickler. He, he, Bernie, we, we used to have bricks two br had bricks in each hand and we has to do we had to do this the sh slides slides yeah. back and forth back oh bernie was brutal and then he put he and i saw and whatever class you missed he put those books on you on the top of the bricks oh bernie had all kinds of oh <laughs> he had all and then he makes you run he, he had all kinds of stuff for you and you know and it was funny because they used to come and check the classes yeah. So I'd go in and he's like, oh, how was class? I'm like, oh, it was good. And he's like, see you after <laughs> he's like, I'll see you after practice. And I, I do right there and there. And so sometimes I should try to catch the people before they got in. I was like, come on, you know, because when back in my day, when we played at Syracuse, you flew out to play your basketball games and then you fly back the next day. Whereas you guys used to fly and come back the same night. We flew yeah. back the next day, like seven in the morning. Didn't expect you to go to nine o'clock class. I'm like, I ain't not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sleep. And I mean, but you know, at the end it all worked. But Coach Fine, he he was he was real. He was real. So coach, I think coach he he took over in 1977, was it for a head coach? Somewhere around there, yeah. You kind of you got him three years into it. So, like, what was the difference? You talked about how he's kind of more hardcore, but what was the difference between him back then to what to what you see how he is now with the guys? Well, I, when I played, he was just no nonsense. He didn't he didn't put up with a whole lot of nonsense. You know, well now he's a little bit laid back. You know, when he ran practice. There was no assistants running practice. He ran the whole practice. And sometimes Brandon alone used to try to get a couple of words in and he used to give him some choice words. Like, look, I'm, this is my show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is my show. And he, he ran practice all the time. He was always there. Um, he never let the assistants do anything other than, you know, the scouting reports. And that was very rare. He was always on top of everything. So say Bernie or Brendan said, well, this is what he'd be like, no, 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 this is, we're, we're going to do it this way. Whereas now, you know, the assistants run the, the, the practices now and he's just there, you know, and I, I guess that, you know, he should have had, he has, he probably has the trust in them when he, you know, he really could have had the trust in the, the assistants that he had back then because him and Brendan Malone is lock heads. It, it, it was bad. It was bad the way they used to lock heads.
maybe he was, uh, you know, early on, he trying to establish himself at, at more so, right? Now well, being he's in the game 50 years, shit, he could just go ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you, you know what? He was, he he knew, he knew his stuff. And it's, yeah. it's, it's strange. He's the same stuff that we do, we did back in the 80s. Same thing. That zone ain't changed. We used to run the same zone. That press. What was that for you though? Like you ain't you wasn't playing zone growing up. So what was that? No, like? no, 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 no. What it was, it like was it was kind of it was kind of it was kind of strange for me, you know. Um, but I knew what I was getting into because they never played. They never really played too much man to man. Although we did play some, but for the most part, it, it, it was zone. But it, it was kind of strange. But it's the same zone today. 